it's all happening in Paris today, in a way, because the Rosetta spacecraft is getting closer to its first ever attempt to land on target, a comet which is some 406 million kilometres from Earth. And over in Paris, scientists from the European Space Agency are in the process of revealing where the spacecraft will try to place its lander robot on. We'll be speaking to a professor of planetary sciences in a minute to find out more on what they're saying. But first, our science correspondent, Pallab Ghosh, explains how Rosetta could be in for a bumpy ride. Oddly shaped, cratered and craggy. The comet that the Rosetta spacecraft will land a probe on in just a few weeks' time. These close-up pictures show that its surface has jagged cliffs. And rather than having a flat surface on which to land, there are steep slopes. And many areas are strewn with boulders. They look like small grains of rice, but they're the size of houses. Later this morning, the Rosetta team will announce where, on this inhospitable surface, it plans to set down. The comet's a lot more lander unfriendly than what we originally thought. So um, the things that could go wrong is if the comet lands on a slope, it could topple over. Um, it could actually fall into a crevasse or it could land on a rock. Um, so it's not actually three legs down. And even if the lander, called Philae, does set down safely, there's little gravity on the comet, so what's to stop it from flying off? On board is a harpoon like this one. The idea is that once Philae lands on the surface, it'll fire it into the surface and latch on to the comet. This is the latest photograph taken by Rosetta, its solar wing glistening in the sunlight and the comet at the top, getting ever closer. Palab Ghosh, BBC News. Well, with me is Monica Grady, Professor in Planetary Sciences at the Open University, and uh, it has just been revealed the location of the landing. Can you tell us? Yes, uh, landing site J is the, uh, <laughs> the first landing site, and landing site C is the backup. Now, which of I course read means that. nothing exactly. to anybody. <laughs> I did read that a minute ago and I thought, I have got no idea what that means. Please explain. Well, the, the comet is a, a sort of big bulge and a, a small bulge on top. And both, uh, both J and C are on the larger of the two parts of the comet. Um, and uh, they've been selected on the, the basis of their... They're reasonably flat, they're reasonably level, they haven't got many boulders on them and they have got good illumination, not too light and not too dark. So it's, it's, it, it's a, a, a trade-off between all these different things. Um, now why is it such a big deal that, that we're going to get onto a comet hopefully? The big deal is because we have never landed deliberately on a comet like this before. There has been something that's crashed into a comet on purpose, <laughs> but this is a directed landing to a specific place. Uh, on the basis of the composition and all those other things uh, that we know about the surface of the comet so that we can um, analyse the, the rock and the ice. And it matters for the formation, the, all the theories about the start of life on Earth because? It matters because comets are the bits left over from when the solar system began. They haven't changed since the solar system began. We believe that the water on the Earth's surface uh, partly came from comets and there are organic compounds in comets which might have been the seeds uh, sown to make life possible on, on Earth. But we don't know that each comet is made of the same thing, do we? So landing on one comet is only the start. Yes, that's the problem. We'll just need another mission. Now, this is going to go to answer a lot of questions. They're made of the same basic stuff, rock, dust and ice. And the mixtures of the two components, ice and dust, differs. But broadly speaking, they're more or less the same. And, and water is key because? Water is key because water is absolutely essential for life on Earth. When the Earth got going, it was very, very hot. Its surface was boiling. No water could exist on the surface. We don't know whether the Earth lost all its original water and whether it had to come to the Earth from comets. So comets might have helped us survive. So how exciting is this mission I mean, for, for everyone who's watching? For everybody, for everybody who's watching, it's just the most exciting thing uh, that I've done uh, in my entire scientific career. And that includes wow. watching landings on Mars and working on Martian samples. This is just takes it one stage further. It's absolutely fantastic. And what, why would you say, what, what, what do you think they will find out? What do you want them to try and find out? Well, what I'm really hoping that we find out is that there are organic compounds there, the same things that uh, go to... Carbon. 
Yes, carbon, sorry. The same things that go to make up DNA. Not actually DNA, but mm. the building blocks of DNA. I hope we'll be able to find out how much water there is there and, and if you like, what flavour the water is, uh, how, much, how many gases there are dissolved in the water. All these things that are absolutely essential for us to understand if we want to fully understand how life got going on the Earth. One thing I don't understand what you just said is, is well, how do we know that all comets are made of the same components and same chemicals? Well, all the comets uh, that we observe within the solar system are bound in some way to the solar system and the solar system as an entity formed from one huge cloud of gas and dust 4,560 million years ago. So they all came from this same building block. What we don't know though is that uh, if there are comets around other planetary systems, so we know there are more planets around other stars, we call them exoplanets, there are probably comets around other stars as well. And so the more we know about our own planetary system, including the comets, the more we'll be able to understand about other planetary system. And who knows, you know, whether there's the building blocks for life throughout the galaxy. I'm going to ask you to come and speak to my children's school. That was brilliant <laughs> explanation. Thank you very much.